Hey everyone. I recently did a video showing uh, security cameras and how I locked down their access to the outside world to stop any data escaping the, the local network. One thing you need though is the clock. So those cameras when they boot up they look for a time server so they can set their clock and that's something you do want. So in this video I'm going to set up a time server and show you how I let those cameras access the clock. So of course this is what I mean on the video you've got this timestamp on the image here and that clock has to be set when the camera boots up. Right, so I'll just scribble down the setup. In the middle I've got the uh, router, which is also the firewall. And that, being a router, is connected to a bunch of networks. So I've got the WAN out there in the big bad world. I've got my, um, well, LAN here. I've got a guest network here. I've got, what else have I got? Home Assistant. I've got the cameras. Okay, so there are all these networks here are on their own VLAN. Right, so for this camera one, I've got VLAN 80 here for Home Assistant, VLAN 150, uh, Guest and, and LAN of course. So normally when you boot up the camera, it'll uh, look at DNS for a time server. So DNS, it'll expect a reply and also network time protocol, the time. And then of course it'll want to do whatever else it might want to do. So I, if I block access to everything, it won't, it won't be able to find the name for the time or get the time. So I have to do something about that. So on this router, I've also got the firewall. As I said, it, it pretty much blocks everything coming into it or being forwarded through it to go to the WAN. But what I'm going to set up is a time server on this router itself, network time protocol. So ultimately, I want the router or the network time protocol daemon in it to go out into the world and find out the time and set the time and then let it be the server for the, all the hosts on here. So it saves them going out to the outside world and by doing so it'll have minimal WAN traffic for time just for itself and then it'll reserve it to everyone else. So I'll set up the NTP server now. Right, I'll just do the old app get install NTP. And there we go. Okay, and the config for it is um, in etc ntp.conf so this is a default sort of config what I'm going to change though is the addresses that get used here I'm just going to change them to be the Australian neck of the woods so that should do for that so service ntp restart okay now I want to check that I can access that locally on the LAN before I get too carried away okay now on this test machine I've got I want to be able to set the time from that so I'm going to put a time client on here App get install NTP date. Okay, that's done. Okay, now if I want to set the time from the time server, I just do sudo um, NTP date and I'll pick one of those time servers. Okay, got the time from the time server, but that went out to that time server out in the world. What I want to do is do NTP dates just locally. So from my own Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I've got the time from my own time server without going to the outside world. And that's good, but what I really want to happen is for the client to be able to select whatever they want, because I might not have control over that, but still have it not leave my network. So I use some NFT rules for that, and I'll show you them now. So what I've got on here in the firewall is a, is a rule so that when DNS comes in, instead of being able to go wherever it wants out in the WAN, which is probably 8888, which they've probably got set, I do a destination NAT and I translate the destination address to be the, um, the DNS server internal here, which is just Pi-hole. So it will go to that and get told where the time server is. And it might be an address out there, that doesn't matter. So it gets its DNS response and then it tries to do NTP and I've got the same thing. I've got a redirect happening to say, go to my NTP server. So it doesn't matter what DNS response it got, it's gonna get redirected to my NTP server. Okay, so here's a snippet from my firewall rules. On the pre-routing hook, which is before any routing decisions made, I say if it comes in from an interface that's not the WAN, so basically any of these interfaces down the bottom here, if it comes in from there and its destination is DNS, a domain, destination NAT it, so change its destination address to be the router itself. So it might have been 8888, it's now gonna be just the router. And oh, my comment is redirected to router. And then I do the same thing for, for time. So whatever the time thinks it's trying to get to, send it to itself. So that's just the, um, the, the natting of it. 
But then I've got the input firewall rule that says if anything comes in, again, not from that interface and it's domain or um, time, allow it. So that's that. So I'll show you that now on a packet capture. Okay, now this is a bit hard to show you, but we'll see if, see if we can manage. On the left here is the WAN interface showing time traffic. So this is what's going out to a real-time server out in the world. And the one over here is from VLAN 100, which is where I've got this testing client here. So if I go back to that and just do um, set the time here, you'll see it's doing the time directly with the server because that's what I put my um, IP address in. But if I do a real-time server like out there in the world, what you'll see is now I'm trying to do it to this external address. But you didn't see that happen on the WAN interface of the router because the router's time server, as I just showed you, it's getting redirected to the, the time server on the router itself. So that saves more traffic leaving my network and frees up a bit of WAN space on my adapter there. So that's why I do that. So with those rules, I can block everything else as I do and just let time go out. But it doesn't actually leave my network all the same. So my cameras can think they're setting the clock from wherever, but it's really happening within my LAN. But I do allow NTP to be set. So that's how I do it and that's how I keep the WAN NTP traffic to a minimum. All right, so that's how you can set up your own time server on your own network and just have the hosts connect to that rather than the outside world. And you're probably starting to see more of the reason why I like having a Raspberry Pi as my router because I can easily have um, control over it, both inbound and outbound. And I can also easily just pipe a TCP dump to Wireshark here and just do a packet capture on any interface. So there are a couple more reasons why I like doing it. Anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy. What the fuck am I going to say to these cats this time?